everybody, and welcome back once again to John's Rock and Vinyl 77. This time around, I have a lot of vinyl to show you guys. Um, it's probably about 18 or about 18 to 20 records, and uh, some of them are a little more rare, and some of them are a little less rare. But I think this is one of my more exciting videos in a while. I crossed a lot of like kind of bigger, higher end items off my list, so. Hope you guys enjoy what I show you guys. These are kind of like my last, the last kind of section of 2021 for me. So I'm filming it a little bit late, but um, I'm going to show you guys what I found, you know, kind of the last little bit of 2021. So, so some of these are, are record show finds. So I'll tell you which ones are the record show finds. This is one of the record show finds for me. This is a band called The Breaks on uh, RCA. And it's kind of like a little, like a pop rock album from like the early 80s, what, like 1983. Uh, it's got this um, kind of power pop kind of sound. Um, light, I mean, it, kind of power pop kind of stuff, um, like 80s power pop, is actually pretty good, I, I, I kind of recommend uh, checking it out actually, so this is a, a find that I found at a record show, so yeah, pretty cool little record, Let's see. then this next record, I found this at an antique store, this is a Shooting Star, Three Wishes, I paid like about a dollar for it, something like that. Really cheap. Um, I'm a, I'm actually a. This is probably my favorite Shooting Star record. Um, the other, the first two are a little more uh, kind of. I don't know. I guess a little different, but they're the way I would describe them is they're kind of like Blue Oyster Cult a little bit, but they're also like they're like Blue Oyster Cult meets like Kansas meets Boston. I don't know, I always, like, the vocals kind of remind me of Blue Oyster Cult in a way, so. If you like kind of 80s rock, you might, you might listen to some Shooting Star. I kind of like them, so. This is probably my favorite of the, of the couple. There's a few more, but, yeah. But I found this, so. There we go. Shooting Star. Alright, and up next we got Clover. And of course, you might, n might or might not know that this is uh, pre Huey Lewis in the news. Where's Huey? Right here on, the, on all the way on the other side. There's Huey Lewis right there. So this is uh, the pre Huey and the Lewis new in the news band. And I mean, it's not far off from the early Huey Lewis in the news. It's kind of got that kind of power pop. Kind of thing, kind of that um, rockabilly almost kind of kind of thing going on. It's it's pretty good. I I kind of recommend it. And those early uh, Huey Lewis albums are pretty good too. So if you're into that kind of music, this is definitely going to be right up your alley. And the album's called On the Wire. Love on the Wire. Love on the Wire. Is that what, is that what it's called? Yeah, Love on the Wire. Yeah. I don't know if this is the first one or if this is the second one. Can't remember. I don't know how many records they did, but this is one of those. This is probably, I would guess this is probably the last one, because, or maybe they did one more, because uh, shortly after this, they did, they became Huey Lewis in the News, so. There you are, Clover. Then we have this little obscure 80s rock record, Touch, on Atco Records. It's from 1980, exactly. Kind of like um, a little bit, it's pretty pretty much like a hard rock record. It's uh, kind of has like, it's kind of a little bit dated for its time, I would say. It's got like some like deep purple tendencies a little bit to it. But it also has like that kind of formation of hair band meets like, um, just like your, like your, uh, what, um, East Coast kind of like AOR kind of stuff. So it's like a cross between like Deep Purple and East Coast Rock and uh, that kind of thing. But a pretty interesting album. There's a I'm trying to think of the one that I 
Black Star was the one that I think I really, really liked on here. I would recommend checking that one out. Yeah, Black Star for sure. But yeah, uh, kind of like another one of those kind of underground, kind of like late 70s, early 80s records. Kind of cool. Little find there. And then we have this little record right here. This is Fortress. With the, it's called uh, Hands in the Till. This is a, I believe, like a San Francisco band. I believe they're from, yeah, they're from um, California. And uh, kind of like, uh, kind of like your 70s um, AOR kind of stuff. It's not anything like, it's not real heavy or anything. There's, there's a couple of more rocking tunes on here. But uh, I do uh, recommend checking it out. It's another one of those. It's one you see all the time. And uh, I just finally picked one up. So very happy to add that to the collection. It's on Atlantic Records. Pretty cool little record there. And this is another uh, record show find. This is uh, Titanic's Greatest Hits. And this is a band you don't really see their, their material all that much. Um, they're a, I want to say they're, um, I don't, I can't remember where they're from. They're from, like, Holland or somewhere like that, or, uh, Scandinavia, some, something like that. Um, but, uh, they do kind of like, um, a little bit boogie rock, a little bit progressive rock, a little bit, uh... Um, hard rock. They kind of they kind of do like the seventies thing that everybody did. You know, it's got that kind of uh, a little bit um, April Wine, a little bit um, uh, what's the status quo? That you know that kind of era of music. It's got that kind of boogie blues rock kind of thing. But they also do like more conceptual, progressive stuff and even harder edge stuff. So I think they're a pretty pretty fun band and. The originals of their albums are pretty hard to find, so I was happy to see this Greatest Hits. I mean, these to import are not cheap, so glad to find that at the record show for a couple of dollars. So I can uh, listen to some Titanic. Really, really good band, actually. I really do recommend everybody checking them out. And here's one that needs no introduction. Rush Hemispheres. Nope. Not the best copy in the world of this. I just got it because it was really cheap and I needed a copy. So, um, yeah, glad to finally add uh, Hemispheres to the collection. And I think I'm only missing, like, four of the 80s and 70s albums from the Rush collection. So, it's pretty good. Filling up the collection, you know, Rush stuff. It's a great album, by the way, if you, if you don't know. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Then we have um, the Hollies, the beat group, the Hollies. This is a second press. If it was a first press, it'd be pretty expensive. These are usually uh, kind of harder to find. It is a mono second press it's on the, um, they call it like the green and black label of and it's usually on the pink. It's like a pink and white and black, I think. Or pink and white and blue. Something like that. But that's what it's usually on. This is the kind of later pressing. So, not not as rare. But still, I mean, I'm a huge Hollies fan. And any addition to the Hollies collection is a good day for me. So, One of my favorite uh, 60s British Invasion bands. Probably my, um, maybe not my single, I mean, of course the Beatles, obviously, you know, but they're pro other than the Beatles, probably my favorite British Invasion band, so, really good stuff. And here's a nice little private record, it's a group called Sunrise, this is a, um, I don't know, kind of like the Acid Archive kind of 
private press records you, you see. And uh, this is just super unknown. It's not on uh, Discogs or anything. And it's uh, like a Christian folk rock record. You know, it's got a bunch of cover tunes on it. Um, some are kind of interesting, maybe, if you want to even look at some of the tunes they do. But yeah, that's um, another little find, a little private record. I'm not sure what it what it's worth, but um, it's still a pretty cool little find locally. So, and what else have I got? Let's see. Let's see. Well, we got a uh, little blues magoos with an electric comic book. This is a really really clean copy. Uh, does not have the comic book unfortunately, but still a really nice copy. And I'm uh, glad to find this. Got it at the record show for like really cheap. So super glad to grab that and add it to the collection. We got the Stylistics. This is their uh, debut uh, record. Super awesome uh, early 70s uh, soul, soul stuff. A little bit funky, a little bit soul. You know, really good. Uh, and really good vocals, of course. You know, that. This has a lot of their hits. It has Stop, Look, and Listen. has uh, You Are Everything, of course, which is one of their biggest hits. So, super glad to add that to the collection as well. And we're coming up towards the end. We have a few more left. This is kind of a cooler a thrift find I found this year. This is uh, Kinda Kinks. And it is a mono first press. Only only issue is the cover's a little bit warped, and the vinyl has just the slightest, just the slightest little cup warp. It's not too. It actually plays pretty well considering. It's not too 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 bad for the warp, but yeah. Very uh, glad to to uh, add that to the collection as well. Original mono. Don't see those too often, so when you uh, when you see that, you gotta pick it up. What else have I got? Let's see what else we got. This is a very exciting uh, thrift store find from this year. This, this past year. This is, um, come and have some tea with the tea company. Really, really clean, like crispy. Look at that cover. It's so nice. Really crispy, clean copy. Like, pretty, pretty hard uh, album to find in good shape. And I managed to find like a mint, mint copy at a, at a thrift store. For a dollar, crazy enough, and the vinyl is as nice as the cover looks. I mean, like, like you couldn't ask for anything better than uh, a really clean copy of this album. Here you are, stereo original, super clean. Super excited to add that to the collection. So, all these last finds are the grill area for me. So, here we have the Jimi Hendrix Experience, Are You Experience. The cover's pretty dang nice on this. Pretty tight, no real seam splitting or anything on the cover. No ring wear, really. And, best of all, this is the... This is the uh, the deal right here. This is what makes it pretty crazy. It's the uh, original press on the steamship label reprise, the pink and the green and yellow, and it's actually pretty nice. It's a, probably about VG VG plus condition. So, super happy to add that to the collection. Of course, a very expensive album nowadays, so to find it in any condition is one thing, but to find it a, 
a first press, stereo, in pretty dang good shape. I mean, a mono is out of the question, like, it. but a stereo, and I found it at, uh, believe it or not, at the record show for $5. As crazy as that sounds, I know. I'm like, Ooh, uh, I feel, I feel kind of feel bad, but it was $5. I love it. I, I'm so happy to have this in the collection, but anyway, we got some more stuff. And these last three are all kind of related, so uh, they kind of get progressively more exciting as they go. So uh, this is my one kind of big online find this year. I've been on the hunt for any original Uriah Heap albums, and um, like the older the better, and the and I've been looking for like the European versions, whether that be UK or wherever, you know. I've just been looking for like Vertigo Swirl. That's what I'm looking for. So that kind of stuff is what I'm looking for for the early Rai Heap. And uh, I came across this auction. It was from the U.S. I got all the records for around sixty dollars. I would say so. Uh, I got a really good deal on them. So here's the first one. This is Look at Yourself, and this is the uh, German pressing of this. And the vinyl on this one is not the greatest. It's probably about VG to VG plus, but it does have the original poster, which is what really like really uh, made me excited to grab this. But yeah, it's on Island. I'm not sure if that was the first press on the German version or not. Probably not, I would guess. I guess it would have been like the regular. Yes, see, it's about VG plus condition, I would say. It's not too, too bad. But the main reason why I wanted it was because of this huge fold-out poster it comes with it. This poster. I can fit that all on the screen. I almost can. That's pretty cool, right? You see all the guys on the bottom. Yeah. Of course, your eye heap is just about like my favorite band of all time. So I want to have like all the different, maybe not all the different variations, but all the, at least the UK and the US versions at some point of all their albums. And uh, yeah, so glad to add that to the collection. For sure. And of course, uh, including tracks like Look at Yourself, uh, July Morning, Tears in My Eyes, Shadow of Grief, um, What Should Be Done, and Love Machine. Just a classic, classic um, album. And of course, I have a US copy, but I just, this was a part of the lot, so I grabbed it too. So. But these two are the ones that I'm super excited about. Especially for the price. I got a really good deal on these, so I couldn't be more happy, honestly. So then next we have Your Eye Heap. Very heavy, very humble. This is a original German pressing in a very nice condition. The cover is not the greatest, but the vinyl is really, really makes up for the, for the condition of the cover. There's the ins inside part, the gatefold, and then the vinyl and the swirl on the other side. And it's just minty. It's just like perfect condition. Like, couldn't be cleaner. Gorgeous cop. This is I, I had a a vertigo of this, but it was a little bit on the rougher side. This one's pretty much perfect. Like couldn't be any any cleaner than this. It's literally it's basically mint, I would say, like near mint to mint condition. Not a scratch on the record, so super excited to add that to the collection. Not a cheap album to find, even the German copy isn't isn't uh, cheap to come by. This 
So yeah, ab absolutely glad to add that to the collection. And then last but certainly not least, probably uh, Uri Heap's rarest album to find, um, Salisbury. Original um, German copy, I believe it's German. I'm pretty sure it's the German as well. But yeah, this is probably their hardest to find album. Uh, these usually um, in like VG Plus condition sell for well over a hundred dollars. So for about probably about hundred hundred fifty dollars usually. There's the uh, inside part, and then of course once again, the Vertigo swirl. It does have somebody wrote their name on it, but it is what it is, you know. But for the price, I couldn't couldn't really beat it. And once again, it's just like perfect condition, just like couldn't be more minty. Just outstanding condition so I'm super stoked to add all that to my collection hope you guys enjoyed my showing this week hope everybody's been doing really well and I look forward to a lot more great finds in uh, 2022 I hope you guys find what you're looking for in 2022 as well so thank you guys for watching and uh and I should have some more videos coming up pretty soon. I think I have a new CD update I need to get to. But other than that, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. And um, bye.